I am in love with this question. We are given the square root of x minus 1 over x plus the square root of 1 minus 1 over x is equal to x, and our job is to find all the real values of x. Now, if you try to solve this problem by squaring both sides multiple times, I am pretty sure that you will quit math forever because it will turn into a giant mess of algebraic terms everywhere, and eventually you will end up with a quartic equation, which is super difficult to solve. But don't worry, because I have found a nice geometric solution to this problem, and the end result will totally satisfy you. But before that, we will find the domain of this equation. For that, we need to make sure that both square root terms are defined for real values. For any square root to be real, the quantity inside it must be greater than or equal to zero. So, x minus 1 over x must be greater than or equal to zero. Take this here and we can write x is greater than or equal to 1 over x, which gives x square greater than or equal to 1. This means x is greater than or equal to 1, or x is less than or equal to minus 1. Similarly, 1 minus 1 over x must be greater than or equal to 0, which gives x greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, combining both conditions, the domain of this equation is all real values of x greater than or equal to 1. Now, let us solve this problem geometrically. Let us call this thing as p. Now just square on both sides to get p square as x minus 1 over x. Take this here and thus we get x equals p square plus 1 over x. We can also rewrite this x as square root of x whole square and this one over x as 1 over square root of x whole square, right? Now let us call this thing as q and just square on both sides to get q square as 1 minus 1 over x. Take this here and thus we get 1 equals q square plus 1 over x. We can also rewrite this one as 1 square and this one over x, as 1 over square root of x whole square, right? Noise. Hey, can you notice some kind of pattern here? Aren't both of them of the form a square plus b square equals c square, where a, b, and c forms the right angled triangle? Make a right triangle with sides p, 1 over root x, and hypotenuse as root x. Similarly, Make a right triangle with sides q, 1 over root x, and hypotenuse as 1. Now here comes the magic. What will be the length of this side? It will be p plus q. But hey, do you remember that p was defined as this and q was defined as this? So p plus q will be equal to this, which is none other than x. So replace this entire side length as x, instead of p plus q. Now what will be the area of this triangle? It will be base times height by 2. Height is this, and base is this. So its area will be equal to x times 1 over root x over 2, or root x over 2. Now if I assume this big triangle is a right triangle, then is my assumption correct? Let us find it out. If it is really a right triangle, then the area of this triangle can also be found using the product of its both the legs that are perpendicular over 2. The product of both its legs will be 1 times root x, and over 2 gives root x by 2. Oh my god! This means my assumption was correct, and it is indeed a right-angled triangle. So what to do next? Yes, right! We will be using Pythagoras' theorem here. We get 1 square plus root x square equals x square. So we get x squared equals x plus 1. On rearranging it, we get this quadratic equation, and on solving it, we get the value of x as this and this. Oh, wow. This value is none other than the golden ratio, and the other value is equal to the negative reciprocal of the golden ratio. But hey, we have already defined our domain as x greater than or equal to 1, and thus we reject this value of x. So, our final answer is x equals golden ratio. My mind is literally blown away right now.
If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.